In this video, I'm going over how employers decide which employees get the high wages and which employees get the low wages, and they do this by setting an educational requirement. It's an example from Hal Varian's textbook and allows us to cover these vocabulary. This is a principal-agent problem, which just means that the principal is trying to incentivize the agent to do something in particular. In this case, our employer is trying to incentivize job applicants to sort themselves naturally into high-paying and low-paying jobs. This table sets up the situation. High-skilled workers have productivity AH, which can be interpreted as the amount of revenue that a firm will get as a result of that worker's labor, say $80,000. This firm is willing to pay someone what they're worth, so really the productivity is equal to the wage in this setup. Similarly, low productivity workers bring the firm a certain amount of revenue, say $45,000, and the firm is willing to pay them that. To think about the cost, we need to understand that the two workers differ in how difficult school is for them. For the high productivity worker, obtaining an education is pretty easy and doesn't require a whole lot of effort. For the low productivity worker, every semester of that same education is painstaking. And we're gonna translate pain and effort per semester into a dollar value, because we're economists and that's what we do. So that's how to think about CH and CL. An education here could be semesters of college, or math classes, or some other kind of education. This scenario also has a reservation wage, which is just an opportunity cost wage. If the worker didn't take the job with our company, how much would they be paid at their next best work option? To solve this problem, we need two kinds of constraints, a participation and an incentive compatibility constraint. The participation constraint is pretty simple. It just tells us under what conditions will the person be willing to participate with us, that is, take the job at our company, as opposed to leaving the job for some other job. The participation constraint says, my package is better than my opportunity cost. And these constraints are from the job applicant's perspective, from the agent's perspective. We are the employer, the principal, but we're setting up the constraints from the job applicant's perspective because that's who we're trying to incentivize. The incentive compatibility constraint has a different interpretation. This constraint says that each type of person prefers to take their own package as opposed to taking the package that was designed for the other guy. So we're setting up participation constraints, and these are going to be inequalities that are from the two different players' perspectives. So we have the high type and the low type of worker. Both of them we're trying to incentivize into their packages. So on this side of the inequality, we want the high type's package. And we want that to be from the high types perspective. So what is the high types package? Well, there's two components here. One is their wage, the higher wage, and the other is the education that they have to require, uh, they have to obtain to get that wage. So if we're going to set this up, we need the wage. And what is the wage? The wage is equal to the high types productivity. And the education is going to be a cost from the perspective of this potential worker, that they have to incur the cost CH, the effort cost of getting E years of education or E semesters of math education or something like that. Now since it's a participation constraint, the other side of the equation is going to have the high types opportunity cost. And in this situation, that's just OH. Then we need to do the same thing from the perspective of the low productivity worker, so this entire equation uh, inequality is going to be from the low types perspective. So first we have the low types package. And of course this is from the low types perspective. And their package really just contains their wage, which is the lower wage, and there's no educational requirement associated with that. And what is their wage? Their wage is equal to their productivity, AL. And that needs to be greater than or equal to the low types opportunity cost. So this one's a little bit trivial. Now one thing we want to keep in mind is the fact that we're eventually going to solve for E to come up with constraints that will help us set E. So we're going to need to solve any inequality that has E in it just using algebra to get E by itself on one side. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. So 
So here we have one inequality that's associated with a participation constraint. Now we're going to do the incentive compatibility constraints, which are a little bit similar in the way we set them up. So we're going to do an inequality, and on this side of the inequality, we have the high text package from the high text perspective, exactly like we started with our participation constraints. And we've already figured that out, so we can just write it exactly as we had it before. Now, on the other side of the inequality, this is the tricky part. We have the low types package from the high types perspective, keeping in mind that the entire inequality needs to be from the same player's perspective. And we're trying to disincentivize the high type from going over and taking the package that we mean for the low type. So what is the low types package? That's just the low types wage, and we know that there's no educational requirement associated with that. And the low types wage is just the low types productivity. Now we know we're eventually going to need to solve for E just using regular old algebra, so I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. So here we have a nice inequality which we can come back to. Now we're going to do the same exact thing from the low types perspective. And so on this side of the inequality, we have the low types package, which we've already figured out is just the low types wage. There's no educational requirement. And on the other side, we're going to have the high types package from the low types perspective. And this would basically be if the low type went over and tried to steal the high types package from them. So in which case, if the low type did that, then the low type would get the high type salary, AH, but they would have to incur an educational cost. And we know that the educational cost is going to be more burdensome for the low type than the high type, so their cost is equal to CL, which is a much higher effort cost per year of education times the education E. And so now we have our, our final inequality, and we can just use algebra to solve for it. Here are our two incentive compatibility constraints, and we can add the participation constraint that has to do with E as well. It will give us three constraints. And what this is going to tell us is that E needs to be greater than this, less than this, and less than this. So we have three constraints. Um, if we would like to make a nice clean constraint, we can actually add these two together. If that's helpful, um, and since we know that the cost of education to the low skill type is higher than the cost of the high skill type, then there is going to be some distance between these two inequalities. And that's how you solve um, an incentive compatibility and participation constraint problem.